speaker, Dean Radin. Uh, he is, I'm sure, uh, familiar to the majority of the people here. If you're not familiar with his work, I recommend you become familiar. Uh, he's the senior scientist at IONS. He's got several faculty appointments. He's the author of, I think, about 200 articles. Uh, two wonderful books, The Conscious Universe and most recently, Entangled Minds. Um, he speaks widely, uh, many conferences. We're very happy to have him here. He was at ICEM as an invited speaker just before. He's been on television, radio, all over. Uh, his work is wonderful, and he will be speaking on Gazing at the Mind's Eye. Dean. Thank you. I'm going to talk about two experiments and a little bit about an experiment that's uh, on the drawing board and about to be run. Uh, the first one is presentiment, which uh, Garrett gave a, a good overview for. Presentiment is a feeling about an event in the future as opposed to a precognition, which is a knowing about an event. It could also be thought of typically as a vague sense of impending doom. <clears throat> so here's how the experiment is designed. It's, to, it's intentionally designed to be very simple and to look like Psychophysiology 101, and it's based on that kind of design. So you, you sit somebody down in front of a blank computer screen, and you record some form of physiological measurement. I typically use skin conductance, although I've looked at others as well. And then they press a button when they're ready to begin. The screen remains blank for five seconds, and after the five seconds, the, comp the computer makes a truly random decision by dipping into a pool of six or seven hundred pictures and selects one and then it shows it for three seconds. It could either be a calm picture like a bunny or an emotional picture like a snake unless you're a, a bunnyologist or a herp herpetologist. Uh, so there are always idiosyncratic responses to these pictures. And then uh, ten seconds goes by and you repeat this. Uh, typically 30 to 40 trials in one session. So the whole experiment takes maybe 15 minutes at most. What I'm going to show you now is a video clip that lasts about three minutes, three or four minutes, that was taken by the BBC for their science uh, show called The Horizon. It's also now being shown in the US uh, by Discovery Science, by, by some other title. So here's an example of it. Turn this. Dr. Dean Radin is hoping that he can prove that what the pilots call prediction could in fact be precognition, a real ability to actually sense the future. His experiment records a person's emotional response to a series of pictures. The images are from an internationally approved clinical test for emotional response and are selected by the computer at random. Well, what we're expecting to see is that after a picture is seen, if it's an emotional picture, you'll get a large rise in skin conductance. And after a calm picture, the person remains calm, it'll, it'll continue to go down. So far, so good and unremarkable. But what Dean is looking for is what happens before the randomly selected picture is shown. What we hope to see then is that before the emotional picture, skin conductance will already begin to go up, and before the calm picture, skin conductance will remain low. And if that occurs, then it shows that there is some aspect of us that is able to outguess what is otherwise a random process. If this happens, then Dean will have tangible evidence of an ability to sense the future. But for the experiment to carry any weight, the effect has to be observed consistently. Well, if it happens completely randomly, that's guessing. If it happens in such a way so that it is systematic, then it suggests that it's not guessing, but it's actually some perception of the future. Dean's analyzed the data from his experiments. This is the, sec the period before the picture appeared. And as you see, in both cases, you have anticipation of what you're about to see. They show that for three or more seconds before an image is shown, 
skin conductance does change consistently in anticipation of that future image. Incredibly, the blue graph shows that before a calm picture, the anticipation is calm. But before an emotional picture is shown, the red trace shows that the anticipation is emotional too. So when you do a, an ensemble analysis, you do one subject who does repeated trials of this type, what you can do is show the average of all of the emotional trials that they got, the average of all of the calm trials. You see where the, the trial begins, where they press a button where the stimulus occurs, and that difference in the, in the baseline is the presentiment effect. In this case, it's statistically significant in one subject. So I've done this kind of ex experiment many times from most between 96 and 2001 using skin conductance, SCL is skin conductance level, and you get a, a, a very strong result. And these are typically unselected people who happen to just be around who are interested in trying it. Some people who claim that they have precognitive experiences tend to do better on this test than uh, an average person. Uh, there are also people who don't do very well at this at all. Typically psychotherapists do very badly <laughs> on this test. And I think the reason is that it's a test that, that's looking at your emotional response to pictures. And psychotherapists tend to go into therapy mode where they specifically learn to not respond to the, the, the emotional input because otherwise it would freak out the client. So I tell both uh, psychotherapists and also meditators to not do that, but to allow the, yourself to feel the emotion because otherwise there's nothing in your future to respond to. So of course we, we do due diligence on this to look at every possible conventional explanation we can think of that might explain these results. The, all of the ones on the top from uh, sensory cues all the way down to subject fraud, we're pretty well sure that this is not a good explanation. The one that usually people then think about is maybe it's an anticipatory effect. It's a physiological form of the gambler's fallacy. But we've looked at that in detail as well, and everyone who's conducted these experiments and get significant results don't find any evidence that this is an anticipatory effect, at least not a conventional one. And as Garrett mentioned, uh, Dick Bierman has done a, a version of this in the functional MRI and found that the amygdala is the spot that, uh, that lights up. And you notice there's a slightly larger effect in the right brain, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. So, to date, I'm aware of 20 presentiment experiments using a, a variety of different kinds of physiological measurements from skin conductance, fMRI, heart rate, EEG. Uh, this one I'm going to talk about now is pupil dilation. Of these experiments, I think only two went in the non-predicted direction, and 11 are statistically significant. So we haven't done a formal meta-analysis yet, but if we do one, it's going to be a whoppingly significant effect. So presentiment and pupil dilation, the reason I got interested in this is because the pupil is a very interesting target to use. It shows a balance between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. You can also tell, you can infer all kinds of interesting things by where the eye is looking and also by how often you blink. And in addition, it allows us to look more poetically at this idea of what does the seer see? When you're seeing something, especially if you're seeing it in the future, well, what is that? So it allowed us to do a test of that sort. So here is a, a Celeste uh, sitting in the eye tracker. There's a little camera over here that's looking at her eye. What the experimenter can see is a, a close-up of her pupil with the software or the firmware actually will detect where her pupil is and 60 times a second measure how big it is and also put crosshairs over where her eye is looking. So on the top, I can see what she's looking at and the crosshairs tell me exactly where in that picture she's looking. So, what we get then is this section is before the stimulus appears, and this section is during the stimulus. I don't know why these little S's drop down. Uh, this, this curve corresponds to emotional pictures and this curve to calm pictures, and that difference is the presentiment difference that we're looking for. So I expected to see this because it's basically the same as using skin conductance, uh, but it, now that we got a significant effect, it allowed me to look at some other things. For example, people blink more before seeing an emotional picture than before seeing a calm picture. The way you infer this with an eye tracking system is when your eye is closed, you lose data about the pupil. And so every time the eye is closed, 
uh, I'm plotting here actually proportion of missing data. There's 